this is basically what Mudbox looks like. Now I'm working on a Cintiq with a Wacom tablet pen, and really, I, you really have to work on um, in Mudbox. You need at least a Wacom tablet. Ideally, I think you should be using a Cintiq. That's why we bought all those ones up in 3500. Um, what I'll do is I'll go under File and Import, and I'll try to find that file we made. And it's under sternum, and I believe we called it new sternum 3D coat to mud. Okay, and it opens up just like it did as the uh, you know the the real literal geometry that you get from Maya. Now um, there's tools down here on the bottom, the selection tool. I'm going to say object, and when I click, I get this bright yellow. So I need to increase dramatically the amount of UVs that are mapping this surface, but I don't want to make the geometry any heavier. So the UV map came out of, I should be able to see it. Yeah, there's the UV map that we'd made in a 3D coat. Okay, um, it's exactly the same thing we saw. But what I want to do is go under, um, mesh and say add new subdivision level and when I do that you notice that I get uh, a lot more little faces here and if I say shift D I get faces and every time I do that I get a new level so I'm actually at three different levels now um, there's a choice here between paint and sculpt so I want to make sure I'm in sculpt oh, I can name that in case I have multiple items I need to uh, sculpt and really to work on it now that I've got these levels um, what I really want to do is is basically just um, use the sculpt tools and I'm really only going to use two tools for the for tonight's demonstration I'm just going to do the sculpt and the smooth so most of the time I'll be using the sculpt tool now it's like several different ways I can use that um, what I'll try to show you first is, is how to do the articulating surfaces of the um, of the rib cage, I mean of the uh, sternum. And what I'm doing is I'm working with the pen. So if I hold the option key and put the pen down, I can tumble. If I hold the option key and push the button on the front of the pen, but I don't touch the screen. The, the button is just raised off the surface. Then I can dolly. And if I touch the back of the pen, again with the option keep depressed, but um, my pen tip is not touching the surface, then I can get the um, pan function. So what I'm going to do initially, I'm going to turn off the stamp tool. We'll get to that a little bit. And I have my size really pretty small and my strength very light and this mirror function is off. I'm going to, because I want to do um, the places where we, uh, where the ribs or, or sorry, the cartilage articulates, I want to make sure I have that X mirror on and what I'll do is I'll bring this in a little bit. So we were saying, for example, that this was where the um, clavicle will articulate. So you, you, you have to kind of experiment. Now see, the sculpt tool wants to pull. It wants to bring things out. But if I hold the control key, it does the opposite. Now what I'm seeing here is it, it's doing a good depression. It might be just a little too big though, so I'm going to undo that. And I'm going to make the size just a touch smaller. And see that's going to give me a little bit. And I'm not pressing very hard, I'm just kind of gradually going over the same spot, looking to try to get that shape. Then I'll come reposition this a little bit and try to put the shape for the the first rib.
and then the second rib, third rib, and then four, five, six, and seven. Now what I might do is, is go just a touch smaller yet and go back into those and add just a little more of a hollow but not all the way out to the edge. So I don't want to, to mangle the edge too much. Okay. Now, what I want to do next maybe is not use the control key and actually begin to bring the surface of the sternum, elevate it, pull it out with the sculpt tool. And I think what we can do too, it might be easier to see if I take object, deselect it, go to sculpt. Oops. Go to sculpt and hit the sculpt tool so you can see a little easier what's going on. Now, in that case, in this case, I'm kind of a little too small. Things are just, uh, for my way of looking at things, that's just a little too abrupt. You know, it's pulling, ooh, there we go. So see, that's just a little better size. And I can fix a lot of this. And you'll get, you'll get used to how much pressure you, know, you want to do this with. Um, this is actually the fun part. You know, all this work you've been doing to build up your models and learn how to use the software. Really, um, I think this is what most of us enjoy doing the most. It's like working with, especially because of the default colors, like modeling chocolate. Okay, now you may want to even go larger here. See, this is just too extreme, that, that raised surface. But first, before I go, I'm going to just bring things up nearby. Okay. So now that doesn't look quite as extreme. And then I'm going to take off the mirror for a sec. And... create a bit of a raised surface here in the center. Because that area tends to get pulled. Now I could probably use a symmetry tool, but it's, it's kind of a balance between what I wanted to do. All right, now the other thing, now I'll go back to the mirror, make my edge or I'm sorry, my uh, brush small, 0 0.8, and then try to, um, you know, draw a bit of a, oops, hold the control key down and create that groove that would exist, you know, where the two bones meet. Again, you're going to have some crinkling here, a little damage, so to speak, that we'll work on fixing. All right, so that's about what we want. Okay, that crinkling definitely got to be fixed. So one of the main, that's why the smooth tool I was saying, that's the tool I use a lot. Now notice I got this strength all the way up, but again, I'm pretty small. So see smooth will basically average the position of those vertices. 
and so you end up going back and forth between smooth and uh, sculpt a lot of times balancing what you're doing now to get this correct is going to take me a little time to fuss with it and I don't think I just forgot to put the control key down there I don't think you guys want to watch that so I want to show you one other way I use these tools and then I'll just you can just imagine if you will that uh, everything I'm doing is off camera is just basically using those tools the last thing I want to do is actually create I'm using this stamp it's down here and it's uh, stones okay and I ma make sure you, you randomize it so what that's gonna do let's make my texture a little bigger that's gonna do is actually start adding a texture to those areas of the bone that are becoming um, you know pulled by the tendons and ligaments and you can apply it in both the you know additive in other words the uh, when the sculpt tool is using it's more natural or more um, when it's pulling or when it's pushing in when you're holding the control key you can also apply that texture so in, in for example in this case I wouldn't want to put the texture on the in the uh, articulating surfaces but I might want to you know put it on this uh, sternal surface and maybe I need at this point to go just a touch smaller and uh, you know add a little bit of an edge again to try to emphasize that articulation or that joint juncture I should really say between the bones okay come over here now I can also uh, like I said there's some of these things are a little too big that's where I might want to go back to the smooth smooth it and that's going to get rid of that texture so it's kind of a, again a balance um, the other thing I can do is actually say flood and with that you can see what that did that that basically reduced the texture reduced the raised effect everywhere um, sometimes it's it, you're better off using the sculpt tool if you want to correct an area that's been raised a little too much and you know I'm going to keep the stamp on and hold the control and see if I can't push push that back in a little bit see that kind of helps and then now that's just a little too textural to me so I'll smooth it by hand okay so that's basically like I said that's that's essentially what we have to do